Do you understand the greatest gift of life is living on the inside of you? Amen. God is an awesome God. Sister D is going to come at the end with our announcements, but I want to thank the church for all that you were able to do uh, in giving. We were able to bless three families uh, on this past Thursday, and it was because of your free will giving that God <clears throat> was able to, and they were able to, you know, I wish I was one of those families because everything that they asked for, they, they received, and a little bit more. So let's give God a praise for you. <clears throat> and, you know, we mentioned this uh, on our website because we want people to know what God is doing through us. We don't want to be on the news. You know, we're not trying to broadcast. We're just trying to do what God called us to do. It was amazing to me that the schedule that we ran on that day, the times that we scheduled to be where we were going to be or supposed to be, it was like clockwork. It was like God was steering and controlling the time, managing the time as he was steering the bus and all of us to do what we were able to do. Those that participated, God bless you so much. I know that you were blessed from just being there. Amen. So God is an awesome God. I know some wanted to be there and you could not, but this won't be the last time. Amen. Won't be the last time. And so we just thank God for all that he's able to do in us and through us. <clears throat> there was a wristband that used to, that kids used to wear and people were wearing back in the day. And it was WWJD, what would Jesus do? But I thought about that, and I looked at the fact that I kind of changed it a little bit. <clears throat> and the question is, what did Jesus do? Not what would Jesus do, but what did he do? While he was on this earth, what did he do? So I, I want to come to you this morning, talk to you on this wise, just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about being just like Jesus in our relationship to Father God because Jesus and God had an excellent relationship. And if you want to know how our relationship or how your relationship should be between you and God the Father, look at the relationship that Jesus had with God the Father. And then we need to be just like Jesus when it comes to his relationship with his disciples and his followers which means that we need to have a certain relationship with one another. We need to be just like Jesus when we are dealing with one another and in relationship with one another. It's kind of like the Ten Commandments. Uh, the first five talks about our relationship with God that we should have with God. And the six through ten talks about the fact the relationship we should have with one another. I can use another illustration. We must understand that the most important relationship we should have it should be a relationship that's vertical. <clears throat> and that is from us to God. Our vertical relationship is very important. And you can tell if people have a vertical relationship based on their horizontal relationship. You can tell if people love God and have a decent relationship with God based on the relationship that they have horizontally with each other. must be too. We cannot afford this Christmas to keep Jesus in the manger. <clears throat> we cannot afford to just tell the nice story about the angels talking about him coming and so on and so forth. We've got to make sure <clears throat> that we understand and live and walk in demonstration of his power, his real reason for being here. He came to redeem man back to God. He also came, and we need to make sure we re-look at this. It's important if we're going to live a victorious life. It's important that we look at the life that Jesus had while he was here. His relationship to his father and his relationship to others. Because that's where we are. That's where we are as Christians. It's good to talk about the story. It's good to talk about the shepherd and the wise man and the shiny star and Herod trying to kill him and Bethlehem and unto this, you know, today is born a savior, Christ the king and the Lord and he's Emmanuel. All, all that's good. <clears throat> 
And all of that is necessary. We need to know all of that. And we need to remember that. We need to keep all of that in remembrance. But who is he to the Father? And who is he to us? As we dive into this, we will be going through a few scriptures. But when my time is up, my time is up. So I'm going to try to get all of this in and hope that God will, will bless you that his word will be a blessing unto you. As we look at John chapter 5, verse 19 through 20, and all of these will be an Amplified Bible. So just like Jesus, I want to be just like Jesus in his relationship to his father, God. When you are saved by the blood of Jesus, you therefore possess the same father God. So, so Jesus had a good relationship with God. God the Father is Jesus' Father. And so as we are born again and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, guess who, guess who our Father is? So that means we could call Jesus our elder brother. I like the fact that Jesus, when he went back, he says, I'm not going to leave you comfort, comfortless, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. So he is on the inside of us. So guess what? We can have the same relationship with our Father. Oh, my God. We can say have the same relationship with God the Father as Jesus had. Can we move? The Bible says over in St. John chapter 5, verse 19, it says, So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, the Son is able to do nothing of himself, of his own accord. Jesus is trying to get them to understand, baby, what you see me do, I'm not doing it on my own. I don't have the power. I don't have the authority. As a matter of fact, I'm not like that. He goes on to say, he said, the son of man is able to do nothing of himself, of his own accord, but he is able to do only what he sees the father doing. How many saints are doing what they see the father? Oh, my God. That's why you stay in trouble, because you are not doing what you see the father doing. And you can't see the father doing anything because you are not connected with him. You're doing your own thing. You're doing your own will. You got your own stuff going on and you forgot. That's not why God brought you here. That's not why you are living. That's not why you still are alive. That's not why you have overcome all of these surgeries and all of this sickness and all of this pain and all of this calamity that came against you in your life. When the enemy tried to destroy you, the reason why you overcame that is so that you can do the will of God, not to do your own will. You're not here to live and have a good time. We're here to do the will of God. And Jesus said, I want to be an example before you. When he was here, he said, this is how you do the will of God. This is what you do. This is why you're here. This is why the blood is still running warm in your veins. He says he's able to do only what he sees the father do. He says, for whatever the father does is what the son does in the same way in his return. Not mixing it up, not reinterpreting it. That's why folk living so crazy because people are taking the word of God and mixing it up and distorting it and putting their own truth in that. Jesus said, I didn't do that. I didn't come to mix up nothing. I came to see what God, I, whew, he said, I came to, to do my father's will. I came to see what the father was doing and then I'm going to do it in the same way because at the end of the day, God don't really need us. He, lead us. He will raise up rocks to praise and crowd and glorify him. But it is a special ble blessing and a privilege to be used of God. It is a special anointing. Uh, it's, it's special and it's very important that you can see what God is doing. A lot of folk can't see what God is doing. They see what the devil is doing, but they can't see what God's doing. So that means you need to change your thinking. Where is God? What is he doing? How is he working? He's working every day, baby. Every day he's working. All day long he's working. Just open your eyes. Get your relationship right with him. Every day, every day, every day. And I keep telling y'all to stop keeping up with all this foolishness that's going on on the news and all this bad stuff. Stop. Jesus said that the poor you're going to have with us all the time. I took something out of that that helps me to stay sound and moving forward. If he said we're going to have the poor with us all the time, that means that that's going to be sickness all the time, folk killing all the time. Uh, all the bad stuff going to keep happening. You're going to have mass murders. You're going to have this thing and that thing and folks get killed and dying and cutting up and disease and wars. 
all the time as long as we're on this earth. Why are we connected? To, why are we still trying to? Why are we live in that? Why are we living beneath our privilege? Why, why, are, we, why are we so entrenched in that? Not realize the flesh like bad news and Philly stuff and stuff and excitement and you know. But that's not going to help your spirit, man. That's not going to help you grow. And that's not going to help you do the will of God. As a matter of fact, that's going, all that's doing is taking your mindset and your purposes off the will of God. You are aborting the mission as to why you are here looking around at all that other stuff. That's why Peter sank, because he took his eyes off of Jesus. That's why we're sinking and having so much problems and issues in our life because we don't see the Father. We're not watching what the Father is doing. The Father is doing glorious things. He's still healing. He's still yeah. delivering. He's still setting the captives free. He's still protecting. He's still regulating mind. Oh my God, he's doing so much. Why don't you meditate on about what he's doing? He's, oh, he's giving breath. He's giving life. He's restoring. He's, oh. He's transforming. He's making me new. He's making me rich in him. He's giving me everything I need. He's causing me to stand. He's giving me victory after victory. I want to think about what God is doing. I want to keep my mind on winning. I don't want to think about losing. I want to think about winning. Because as long as I'm winning, I'm going to look forward to winning again and winning again and winning again. But when I think about losing, it takes me down in a spiral. And it brings about negativity and a whole lot of other stuff. And the next thing you know, I'm walking around in the grocery store with a bread, a loaf of bread in my hands complaining. Something First Lady said a few Sundays ago, he says, she said that everybody in here is well blessed. We're well, man, we were well able to be a blessing. <sighs> this ministry was well able to be a blessing to those families. And those of us who saw the families, we saw... If it was not for the grace of God, who's on our side? I ain't say who was on our side. If it was not for the grace and mercy of God, who is now on our side, there we go. Some of them are in a situation where they have no hope. They have no understanding. They think what they're going through is just, it just, it's just their faith. Their fate, that's what they have to look forward to, is struggling, going without. But what they really don't know, that if they had a relationship with God the Father yeah. through Jesus Christ, that's what the devil don't want them. If they knew that they, had, that they could have a relationship with God the Father, and this God would supply all of their needs according to Christ, they don't know that no weapon for they don't know that God is able to do all exceedingly but they don't know and that's why we got to gird up the lawns of our the lawns of our mind and make sure that we stay solid and sane in Christ Jesus because if we ever lose our mind we won't know either That's why you got to keep your mind. I will keep him or her in. Your problem is your mind everywhere else. That's what your problem is. Your, your, your problem is not that you don't have enough, not that you don't know enough, not that God is not blessing you. Your problem is your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You got to keep your mind stayed on Christ Jesus. You got to keep your mind thinking about the Father all the 
time. You got to thank him when you get up in the morning. Thank him when you lay down at night. Thank him for protecting you during the daytime. Thank him for helping you. Thank him for keeping you. Thank him for giving you wisdom and ability and strength and mercy and love. And then he shares his glory. And then he gives you favor. Then he blesses you time and time again. He helps you even when you mess up. Oh, yes. Mm. So Jesus said, baby, I'm doing. I'm only. He says, he's verse 30. He says, I'm able to. I done skipped. When we went, when we when we in theology class, we we had this book, and I've taught. I've probably said this before. There was a book that we studied out of, and it was called "The Mind of Christ" by John Blackady. And one of the things that stuck out that I remember this is back in probably ninety mid nineties. Out of all that I learned in that class, how many of you been through something, or you were taught something, and Maybe just one or two things stuck out. He, he, you, you went through all them hours and all that training. <laughs> and you remember one or two things. But I need, you to, I need to help you understand something. That is not the much knowledge. But it's the revelation of that knowledge. And a lot of times God will give you one or two things. That's rhema word to you. That changes your whole life. You've done all that training, all that study, spent all that time. But that's just the way the kingdom works. It takes a lot of time to do just a few things. A lot of times, and I just want to make an example. We're going to move on. A lot of times people don't understand the praise team. Before the praise team come up here and sing, there are tens and twelves and fifteen hours sometimes spent on one song. When we put everything together collective, by the time I've gone over music and parts, and they've gone over words and parts and stuff and listened to song. A lot of hours going in <clears throat> to sing a song that lasts three to five minutes. That's why you shouldn't be sitting there looking at them like, I'll be glad when they finish. Very discouraging because of the time that was put in. So you take good, decent singing and music for granted. And so we have to understand that we've got to understand and find out where God is working. Understand what he's doing. And then don't make up stuff to be in competition with him. Join him. So these two things that I learned is the, is the, the most important thing that I learned in going through that theology class was not all the stuff that I was taught and this and that and the other. It was this one thing that was rainbow word to me, and that is to find out where God is working, have a relationship with him to find out and know where he's working and join him. That is simple, but it's hard to do. Because most folk, when they find out where he's working, they'll go by. They'll talk to him a little while. They'll do a few things and see you later. Yep. Look, God don't need us to do anything. Amen. Not really. But he invites us to join him because he know our purpose more than we know. Our purpose is to do his will. Our purpose is to fulfill the destiny that he has in our life. Our purpose is to make sure that we do the will of God. When you do the will of God, you are blessed. When you do the will of God, you are blessing to others. When you do the will of God, you increase those who are on there. You help folk go to heaven. You help people go to heaven. You help people live a victorious life right here on the earth when you do the will of God. So, 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 and it's very easy. 
you can always tell what God's working because you see his anointing. Yeah. You see fruit. You see folks being blessed. You see transformation. You see people change. You feel the glory of God. You see the glory of God. You see the blessings, not only the blessings of God, you see God heal folk. You see God deliver folk. You see God heal you. He touches you. He touches your mind. He touches things that you do. Oh my God. He touches things yeah. that you do. He blesses your hand. That's how you know he working. He, he doing stuff through you that you know you didn't have the ability to do. He's saying things through you to help folk that you know it wasn't your words. He's using you in a way that you know that you just crack up by yourself. You know it had to be God. God told you to say that. God helped you to do. You know you made that shot not on your own, but because God anointed your hands and boy, it was just laid. You knew the answer to that hard question because the Holy Ghost gave it to you. So baby, it's easy. Just find out where he's working. What are you doing? What God doing right now? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing in the life of the church since we're here together? Since we are here together, since we are here as one yeah. body in Christ, what is he doing? Yeah. He's blessing the whole church. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, thank you. He's blessing everybody here. Yeah. Collectively and individually so. And see, it behooves us. See, let me tell you what wisdom is. Wisdom is what train is everybody on that God is driving? Huh? What train? What bus? That God is that God is moving and driving. He's the conductor and people are on. Well, that's the one I want to be on. Don't you know it's hard to do your own thing? Don't you know it's hard to make it up as you go? Don't you know it's hard to be contrary? It's hard to have a bad attitude. It's hard to do all of that stuff. You got to have the right attitude to win in this world, in this life. And you got to have an attitude of gratitude. And you got to make sure that you are one with God the Father. You need to be so one with him that you can stop any time of day, anything in the midst of what you're doing and say, Lord, help me. And God would just... God is in anything and everything you want him to be in, but you got to be able to recognize where he's working. He just want our hands. So John 5, John chapter 5, verse 30, we don't have long. John says in chapter 5, verse 30, he says, I'm able to do nothing of myself independently of my one accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders. Look at that. He said, even as I hear from God, having a relationship with him, so you got to be able to hear. So that's why you got to keep the noise out of your life and stop listening and watching and playing and all that stuff. Because it's a distraction. He says, I even hear. Somebody say hear. hear. He said, I hear. I judge. I decide. As I am bidden to decide. As the voice come to me. This is Jesus talking now. He said as the voice come to me. So I give a decision. When, when the voice of God comes to me. I don't make a decision. Until I hear his voice. And guess what he says. He says and my judgment is right. Just righteous. Why? Because I do not seek or consult my own will. You see how important it is to be connected with God the Father, to have an intimate relationship with him, to where you hear him every day, all day long. So when you make decisions, you can make the right decisions. People don't hear from God. Consequently, they make the wrong decision. They make one wrong decision after another, one poor decision after the other, one bad. I went from wrong to poor to bad decision. 
one after the other, a series. They get in trouble because they leave God out. Now they're in trouble, so they try to infiltrate and figure it out and do their own thing, and they can't figure it out. They mess it up, and then they go back and try to fix what they messed up, and it just gets bigger mess, and now you just got one big conglomerate mess. When all you got to do is push the pause button and hear from God. I heard what the president said. I heard what the sp- I heard what the specialist said. I heard what the doctor said. I heard what the governor said. I heard what my boss said. I heard what the um, physician said. I heard all of that. But what did God say? And you got to know, you got to know what God says. You, that's why you got to know his word. God says, his word says, by his stripes I'm healed. Yeah. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake yeah. you. God said, I'm the great I am. That means whatever you need him to be. Sister Sally need him to be this and Sister Sue need him to be that. He's whatever you need him to be. Yeah. See, man, you got, to live, you got to live an intentional life. You got to make sure that you keep the enemy under your foot. You can jump all you want to in church talking about the devil under my feet. The devil under my feet. I stomp on the devil. The devil ain't thinking about you doing all that. <laughs> Just as long as he can defeat you in your mind, as long as he can keep you disconnected from Father God, as long as he can keep you thinking wrong, you can stomp on and shout all you want to. Because he know he's going to make you cuss your husband out as soon as you get in the car. You're going to cuss him out on the way home while you stomping on the devil. Theatrics. And see, that's the problem with the kingdom. We've gone through so much emotionalism and we've gone through so many de- theatrics and we love to talk. See, we love to talk about exciting stuff, you know, that kind of thing. Boy, we had a great time. Boy, we ran and we stomped on the devil and we. And as soon as somebody pushed the wrong button, you act like God the Father is not your father. You say everything the devil tell you to say. See, it's about your behavior, man. It's about what you say. It's about what you do. It's about how you respond. It's about living a good, righteous life. Can I move on? He says, I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. I came here to do the will of God, and that's all I care about doing. Over in John chapter 6, verse 38 through 39, he says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will and purpose, but to do the will and purpose of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me. See, not only do he knows he's talking about what the will, he, not only is he talking about what he should do, but what he's supposed to do, he knows what he's supposed to do. He said, I'm coming to do his will and his purpose. This, and then he come back and said, this is his will and his purpose. He said, that I should not lose any of all that he has given me. Oh, so Jesus has uh, such a relationship with God. That he understands that he is to permeate his disciples and followers' lives so much so that he don't lose them. They are not going to hell. Not only that, they're going to be victorious as they walk this earth. Do you understand we are to be victorious? We're not to, we're not to live from problem to problem, issue to issue. Bad stuff to bad stuff. Almost lost my mind yesterday. About to lose it again today. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That ain't for how you supposed to be living. I got to borrow from Peter to pay Paul. I ain't got enough money in my checking account. I can't write no check until I get another check in. I can't. I ain't got nothing saved. I, I, money spent. I don't know what I'm going to do about Christmas because I'm spending all my money in you know, you got all this stuff going on. I'm up to here. Don't y'all get quiet. Y'all better start shouting. I know something going on. 
You better shout right now. I know something going on up in your house. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have that life more abundantly. He's talking about your well-being. He's talking about the fact that you are able to have more than enough and manage that which you have. I know people start getting quiet when you start talking about that. And so he says, he says, I should give, he says, and this, for I have come, oh, oh, oh. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will and purpose, but to do the will and purpose of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should not lose any of, of all that he has given me, but that I should give new life and raise them up at the last day. That I should give them new life. I'm going to give them new life. I'm going to help them to be born again. I'm going to help them have me on this inside of them. Yeah. <clears throat> They're going to be born again. Not only are they going to be going born again, they're going to have a, a new life in this life. And then he says, then I'm going to raise them up at the last day. That way you ain't got to be scared to die. What you, what you crying for? You dead? I mean, somebody died or you going to die. What you crying for? You need to read the word of God. As a matter of fact, immediately when you close your eyes in this body, the, your angels, you have assigned angels that take you into immediately, immediately when you close your eyes, you have angels that take you into the presence of the Lord. What's your problem? I know what your problem is. You don't believe. Your problem is you and your emotions. Your problem is you can't get past your own thoughts and your own wills and your own purposes and your own desires. Your problem is you just flat don't believe the word of God. That's what it, you believe everybody. You. You can believe for everybody else. You can lay hands on everybody. You can speak into everybody else's life, but you can't do it for your own life. <clears throat> but I know an individual in this ministry that, that is just the opposite. This individual believed God for their own life. They believed God that God was going to bless them and heal them and deliver them. And they believed it for their own life. It took a while. They had to go through some stuff. Yeah, they went through ups and downs, but they believed God for their own life. And he did it. Now, this is where I'm going to try to get them. And I'm just letting them know out loud. They don't know who I'm talking about. But this is where I'm going to try to get them. If you can believe God can heal you and touch you and deliver you and perform a miracle in your life and you know it, you believed it, you know it, you know it because you believed it. And because you know it, it happened. It happened. That's how you know. How do you know? Because it happened. How did it happen? Because you believed it. Now, all I need you to do is come with me and believe the same thing for somebody else. Somebody else is trying to believe. I need, do you know how powerful? Uh, uh, uh. See, you don't know how powerful you're going to be. You don't know how the Lord going to use you because you got it right. Most of the time, folk can believe for other folk and can't believe for themselves. This individual believed for themselves. Now, all you got to do is go testify about what God has done for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is say, look, let me tell you something. This is what happened, and this is what God did. And he will do the same for you because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And he has no respect of person if he blesses somebody else <laughs> yes he will and he goes on to say verse 39 he said this is the will of him who sent me that I should not lose any of them so we've gone through that one other thing I want to tell you I've got a few minutes left we've got to be just like Jesus in our relationship to each other this is how Jesus was with his relationship in his relationship to his disciples and his followers. Can I take you to John 17 right quick? Very quick, very quickly. John 17, chapter 17 in Amplify. We're going to start right there at verse 4. I'm going to try to calm down. I keep telling myself I need to teach more. He says in verse 4, he says, I have glorified you down here on the earth. By completing the work that you gave me to do. I have manifested your name. This is Jesus talking to the Father now. He says, I have manifested your name. God, I've manifested your name. I have revealed your very self, your real self. I've tried to tell folk when they see me, they see you, God. How many people can say that nowadays? When you see me, you see the fuck. See the death. And, 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 and so he says, he, he says, I have manifested your name. I reveal your very self, your real self to the people whom you have given me out of this world. 
Jesus said, these folk, these disciples, these followers, they were yours, and you gave them to me. And they have obeyed and kept. Jesus said my word. They said your word. And we ought to teach people to keep the word of God. Sometimes we want to get in there and we want to take some credit. Remember what I told you? Remember what I said? I'm the one that helped you. You know, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't such and such and such and such. Well, y'all know we like that sometimes. I'm the one that, no, why don't you say God is the one? Why don't you say, remember what God said? Remember what God did? Remember how God? Don't everybody think you a spiritual guru that you just got all the power and stuff. That's why God can't use you because you, you're so busy trying to promote yourself. Special folks like us, special, special preachers and pastors, we're trying to, we, that's why God won't use your hands to do nothing. That's why you can't heal. No. That's why you can't lay hands on the sick and nobody get healed because you want to take the credit and God knows. So he said, I ain't doing nothing with you. <clears throat> he said, I had enough of that from Satan. That's why I kicked him out of heaven. When you think right, you'll do right. And when you do right, folk will get blessed. You'll be blessed and everybody around you'll be blessed when you have the right motive. Can I move on? And then he says, he says, I am verse nine. He says, he says, I am praying for them. I am not praying, requesting for the world. He says, I ain't praying for the world. A lot of folks say, well, pray for the world, pray for the sinner, pray for the world, pray for the world. The world going to be the world. The world going to do what they do. They going to have what they have. I need somebody. God needs somebody to stand up for the Christian. Those that's trying to do right. Those that's saved and sanctified. Those who are trying to do the will of God and falling down sometime. And those who are trying to do the will of God and stumble and trip sometime. Jesus said, those are the ones I'm praying for. I ain't talking about them folk that don't want God. He said, I ain't talking about the folks that, 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 you, that he says don't cast your pearls before swine. He said, I ain't talking about them folks where he said don't give that which is holy to the dogs. I ain't talking about them folks. Come on. Come on. Come on. We too busy trying to get folks saved that don't want to be saved. They don't want to be. Leave them alone. You ain't God, no way. Amen. You just tell them and keep moving. No, I know what it is. You won't you tell everybody, boy, they say because I talk to them. I'm sorry. So, so, and so what was I? Verse 10. Verse 9 says, I'm praying for them. I am not praying requests for the world, but for those you have given me. For they belong to you. Everybody that's under the sound of my voice and everybody that's in your eye shot that say they don't belong to you. I don't care if they're your husband, wife, or your kids. Jesus said they belong to God. Everybody in here, and I'm careful that I don't say my members. Hey, ain't not, you ain't not my members. You belong to God. All souls belong to God. I'm just an under shepherd. You're the sheep. And we're in this thing together. Yeah. Only thing is, I can say that mine is what's from here to there. And then I can't brag about that too much because if God take the next breath, that won't be mine either, will it? Last time I checked, I didn't even die for this. Jesus died for this. So I believe the correct saying is that I belong to God and he paid an awful price for me. He owns me. And I'm going to digress with this. Verse 10, he says, all things that are mine are yours and all things that are yours belong to me. And I'm glorified through them. They have done me honor and them my glory is achieved. And now I am no more in the world, but these are still in the world. He's talking about us. He said, I'm coming to you. He said, Holy Father, keep in your name in the knowledge of yourself. Those you have given me, and that may be one as we are one. Yes. While I was with them, I kept and preserved them in your name and in the knowledge and worship of you. Those you have given me are guarded and protected, and not one of them have perished or lost except, you know, Judas Iscariot. Let me tell you some saints. We are our brother's keeper. 
we should be earnestly trying to help one another. If we see one another going astray, pastor can't do it all. I can't do it all. But one another, we should be helping one another, encouraging one another. We should make sure that we're accountable to each other. We should make sure that we're strengthening one another, praying for one another, helping one another, leading one another, guiding one another, loving one another through pains and issues and problems and situations. We should be concerned about one another. We shouldn't just let one another just do anything and slop it up and, and shame the name of God. If you know somebody, a brother, and you know he's doing, he doing wrong, he's blatantly doing wrong, you need to go talk to him, man. Don't let him, don't, don't let him, don't let him make the ministry look bad, the vision look bad, the kingdom of God look bad, God look bad, make you look bad. We, you know, we act like we're scared to talk to folks. We got to hold our, if you're a real Christian, we got to hold each other accountable. And when you tell somebody to do something or to stop doing something, they should get angry with you. They should thank you. Matter of fact, they should go in their pocket and bless you. Oh, I hurt somebody that time. You should go in your pocket and at least give them a $20 bill and tell them thank you for telling me about my ugly self because God going to bless me when I change. I can't get no help in here. You know why I said that? Because that's so important. It's so important. That's very important because that's going to help you be blessed. We've got to watch over one another and be our brother's keeper just like Jesus watched over his disciples and prayed to God. Don't take them out of the world, but keep them from the evil that's in the world. So when you talk to one another, when the saints talk to one another this Christian season, when you think about Jesus coming to die, but he was born. We ain't got to the death yet. He was born. When you talk to one another, think about the fact that you want to encourage each other. Encourage one another. And don't take no foolishness to them. Don't take them dead stuff and garbage and gossip and all that foolishness. Give them something that they can use that's yeah. going to help them. Talk to them about something that's going to help them. I see y'all bowing your head and talking about yes and amen and all this kind of stuff. But you got to change your habits and change your mindset. Because as soon as the atmosphere is right and you around the wrong, around the, the, the right folk, there you go again. I know pastor says such and such and such and the word says such and such. Baby, let me tell you this. And you need to pause and say, no, I want to hear this. I want to hear it. If it is not going to build up and edify come on, come on. and restore and help and glorify him and push me toward doing the will of God and his purposes and his plan, mm -hmm. talk to the hand. Mm -hmm. If it's not his plan, talk to the hand. And mean that. I'm going to be going home talking about getting in your privacy. I wonder what they were going to tell me. I wonder what they had to say. I wonder what's going on. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord God, that you have taught us in your word how to have a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. But you have also taught us how we should relate to one another, that we are brothers keeper. That we should gird up the lines of our minds and understand that we are to walk together in unity and harmony and oneness. And that there be no division, no factions, no quarrels. Help us to stay out of the foolishness of this world. Help us to want that which is pure and righteous and that which will glorify you. Father, we thank you that we are here in this season to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But in celebrating his birth, we want to make sure that we allow him access to lead and guide us and to help us and to cause us to be a reckoning force on this earth. God, we don't have the luxury of sitting back in empathy or 
apathy. We don't want to be pseudo-Christians until we just go along and whatever will be, will be. No, you called us and saved us and delivered us for a purpose. We pray right now that your divine will will be done through our lives. And we will continue to perpetuate heaven on earth. Father, I realize that sometimes all we need is just one touch from you. One, one, one touch. Not a, one, 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 one. Ah, just one. You told us in your word that one lady spent all that she had and suffered for 12 years. And she found out all she needed was one touch. Not only did it heal her, but it changed her well-being. Lord, you put that in the Bible so that we can understand that we don't have to keep going until we have exhausted all of everything that you've given us, but that we can stop right now and go to the throne and talk to you in the name of Jesus, repenting and asking you to forgive us and knowing that you hear us and ask you and whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, according to your will, you will do it. Let us know that we can hear you and be helped by you in all that we do. Let us, let us continue to move forward and to do your will and walk in your purposes. This day, in the name of Jesus, with Jesus giving us authority and power and the wherewithal, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless.